my personal bias? Well, I was raised on too much sugar, refined carbohydrate and polyunsaturated oils. I was a fat kid. I had a tumour at the base of my brain 17 years ago and required surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. I had some other health issues and I've lost 23 kilograms since then. That all started my journey into nutrition. I researched healthy eating and a few years ago I described the, the nutritional model of inflammation and how that combination of fructose, refined carbohydrate and polyunsaturated oils appears to be toxic and certainly in the amount that we're having in society at present. I have been advocating a low carbohydrate healthy fat lifestyle for some time. I started a website and social media around reducing sugar consumption, nofructose.com. I need to cover some science in this talk today. The science of nutrition is actually really simple. Vested interests just make it complicated. We eat to fuel our bodies and we need protein, fat and micronutrients for maintenance work and hormone function. Let's focus on the fuel. A fire can burn a variety of fuels, logs, branches or kindling. You just decide on how many times you want to get up and put fuel on the fire. The same goes with our cells. The engine of our cell is the mitochondria. It requires fuel that can be sourced from different things. It works through the Krebs cycle that revolves around acetyl-CoA and that's all the mitochondria wants. That acetyl-CoA can come from sugars, protein or fat. The mitochondria does not care where the acetyl-CoA comes from. The mitochondria has no emotional attachment to the fuel source. I repeat, it has no emotional attachment. Once you get a fire going, the branches and logs will keep on going. It does not need kindling. Essential proteins are like branches and healthy fats are like logs. Carbohydrate is like kindling. We actually don't need it to keep the fire going. In nature, it's only available seasonally in fruit for a short time of the year. It's a luxury item in nature to help us put on fat for winter. We need more than just fuel though. We need vitamins and minerals for a variety of maintenance functions. We actually don't need the carbs. There is no, no biochemical pathway that requires ingested carbohydrate, whether or not it is glucose or fructose. The brain is not dependent on you eating 130 grams of glucose a day. That is a myth. I'm not recommending no carbohydrate. I'm just looking at the biochemistry. Carbohydrate is a luxury item. From a cellular level, we need protein, fat, vitamins and minerals. The carbs are along for the ride. It's a balancing act. Real food is a combination of the three, protein, fat and carbohydrate. Juggling two is easy, but once you just put in the carbohydrate, it's a bit trickier, but it can be done. What happens when we add in the polyunsaturated oils that have come into our lives in a staggering amount over the last 100 years? Soy oils, vegetable oils, margarine and the seed oils. They are in, they are in virtually all processed food. They are, unfortunately, unstable chemically. And the consumption of them in excess is as dangerous as nuclear waste. It just builds up over time. The reality, however, is our food guidelines are anything but balanced. Processed carbohydrate from cereals, grains and sugar have become the major fuel source. Healthy saturated fats have been demonised for decades and cheap polyunsaturated seed oils have been thrown at us and is a disaster for most people. So that's my simplification of nutritional science. What happens if you decide to talk about it? You get into trouble. There are a lot of people that have their careers based on the food guidelines and there are those that stand to profit from the guidelines staying exactly as they are. Professor Tim Noakes is speaking after me today. What do we have in common? Well, we've both been reported by dietitians to our respective medical boards for encouraging people to eat real food. We both recommend reducing sugar. We both recommend reducing refined carbohydrate in our diet. We both recommend increasing healthy fats and in particular red meat. Who could possibly take offence to those ideas? Well, there's the sugar industry, the grain and cereal industry. The processed food industry certainly isn't going to like our message of fresh food. Anybody with a belief that animal fat is bad? Well, I wonder which groups they are. We've got the vegetarians, the vegans, the animal activists, or those with an ideology that meat causes disease and cancer. This is turning out to be the problem group. I originally thought I was upsetting the industries I was encouraging people to avoid, but it's not about reducing something. It's turned out to be about increasing the meat that is upsetting those with a belief.